Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter, the CEO of Boardroom Resources and the co-founder and editor-at-large of Corporate Board Member Magazine. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the show. Today is special because we're doing a, a special European edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. And we're here in lovely Como, Italy, which is the site for Diligence Directors Experience, where we invite European directors to come and share their views on board governance and boardroom trends. And I'd like to introduce my guest for today, and it's Giannis Petridis, who is the chairman of the supervisory board of a Rotterdam-based Refresco, the world's largest independent bottler of private label beverages. And up till 2016, he also held the position of chairman of the board of Largo, parent of Wynn Hellas Telecommunications, located in Greece. Welcome, Yanis. It's a pleasure to be here, and what a lovely setting. Yes, it is. So the, the thing that we're going to talk about today, with all your chairman experience, okay, we're going to talk about three traits common to all successful board chairs, okay? So let's start, though, by sort of tapping your experience to say, what is the role of the board chair in European companies where you've served? Well, certainly the role of the board chair has changed, I think, tremendously over the last, over the last 10 years. Uh, you have demands for greater transparency, more compliance, a much faster pace of innovation, investor activism. So all these combined, I think, have had an impact on the role of the chairman. Um, now, if I look at kind of the three kind of uh, highlights, in my view, in terms of the role of the chairman, uh, I would mention, and I'll go through them one by one, you know, first, uh, the role of the chairman in terms of setting strategy. Secondly, the role of the chairman in terms of supporting effective management performance. And thirdly, the role of the chairman and the board, obviously, in terms of managing risk. So let me kind of take you through my thinking kind of one by one, and then we can uh, you know, discuss as, as much or as little as you want on, on each point. So let me start with the first point, the point of setting strategy. Um, I think one of the mistakes that a number of, that some boards make, and clearly that is the responsibility of the chairman, is treating strategy as like a, a one-time event, once a year, when the boards get together and they discuss strategy. I mean, strategy has to be an iterative process between the board and management, so it's not a one-time event. So I think the role of the chairman in terms of ensuring that this iterative process between the board and the management actually takes place and there are different kind of milestones, making sure that the chairman leverages the capabilities and the know-how of the board members individually and collectively, I think is an incredibly important part of the role of the chairman. So that's the first one, setting strategy. The second one, uh, supporting effective management performance. Clearly, the role of the chairman is to work very closely with the, with the CEO and the management team, ensuring that there is just one vision behind what the company does, and um, making sure that the chairman spends enough time with the CEO, mentoring, challenging, uh, to ensure that um, all the insights are actually given, and all the issues that, or opportunities that have to do with, with effective management performance are actually put on the table. A critical part of that is uh, clearly the discussion on succession planning, not just for the CEO, but for uh, other members of the team. Uh, so, so, so that piece, I think, is just incredibly important. So the role of the chairman as a mentor to the CEO, I think is a very important one. Uh, the third role that I see, important role, is, is the role of risk management and how the chairman and the board uh, understand the risk profile of the company, understand the risk mapping and which are the areas that the company has uh, risks slash opportunities, uh, and make sure that there is effective dialogue uh, within the board and between the board and the management to make sure that the, the board understands the risk profile of the company, but more importantly, takes the actions that are, are required to, uh, to reduce the risk and, and, and create economic value. So in the U.S. you have a situation where it's 
the, it's not as a defined role on chairman, okay? Some, sometimes somebody takes the role of CEO and chairman, and then there's a lead director, uh, where it, in, I think I'm right in that most European countries it is more defined uh, and they're more participatory you know, in, in their actions. So it seems to me that there's a board leadership advantage when it's more defined uh, versus um, sort of the US model. Would you agree with that? I think so, and I think it's an extra level of security in the sense that you've got kind of the CEO and the responsibilities well defined. You have the chairman and the responsibilities of the chairman reasonably well defined. Obviously, there are always gray areas. And I think that separation and that extra kind of level of protection uh, actually can be very helpful, always assuming that the chairman and the CEO work well together because if they don't, then you might have a complexity that might not be there in a U.S. environment. That's one thing I see sort of as, the, as a downside potential. If you have a strong chairman, it seems like all of a sudden is there confusion in the organization of who, quote, is calling the shots, uh, whose responsibility. What's been your experience with that? At the end of the day, the responsibility, the primary responsibility is with the CEO. I mean, that is the person that is managing the day to day, is the day that is, is the person that is, you know, full time involved in the project. So at the end of the day, I think that's, that's pretty clear. I think the role of the chairman is much more, and the board, one of oversight and ensuring that they leverage the capabilities and the strengths of the CEO and they are helping uh, the, the CEO create value. Another way to look at it is, I'm always looking at the role of the chairman and the board as a high performance team. Uh, and a high performance team that is there to help the CEO, to leverage on the CEO, as opposed to creating more complexity for the CEO. And to the extent that we do that, I think we're probably doing our job. To be honest, there's nobody that we could have here that probably has more experience than you do on the chairman um, ex uh, duties. So I wanted to thank you for taking the time to join us. TK, it's an absolute pleasure. Thanks very much for the opportunity. So that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms, the special Europe edition. Uh, we'll be back again next week when we take a look at another critical topic that'll help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then.